How good does it feel when you go to an event, whether it's a large event or a small event, and someone comes up to you and uses your name, they remember your name. Feels so good, every one of us loves it when someone uses our name. It helps us feel included and valued and heard. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my favorite strategies to help me remember other people's names when I'm working with a group, all of them without name tags. Let me share two scenarios with you. It's that group setting where you look around and you know that person over there, but you can't remember their name. And ordinarily that means you'll just make a beeline to someone else that you can remember the name of. Or maybe in that same setting, someone comes to you and says, hi Mark, it's great to see you. They use your name, which makes you feel pretty good, but also awkward at the same time because you can't remember their name. If you work as a group facilitator, I'm sure that these scenarios are really familiar to you. There is almost this expectation that as we are responsible for the well-being of our groups, that we'll remember everyone's names and we want to, but wishing and hoping actually is not a really good strategy. And in fact, I don't actually have any further superpowers than anyone else in order to remember names. I just simply have some good strategies in place to help me remember names. In this video, I'm gonna share with you six of my most useful strategies and techniques that help me remember names. And to be fair, it also helps me look pretty good in the eyes of the group that I'm working with. But first, a story. I worked at a very large summer camp in the United States for eight summers, and I was one of five people who looked after uh, the entire campus, 800 children and around 380 staff. So a really, like a little town. Uh, that gathered together over the course of the summer. And I was responsible for about 250 boys and roughly 50 staff as part of that overall camp. And my objective every single season, and the kids were there for at least four weeks, sometimes six or up to eight. My objective was in the very first week, I would know every kid's name and all of my staff's names as well. That's a pretty big undertaking, over 300 names. This is how I did it. My number one tip, if you can do this, and it's not always possible, is review the list of names of the people coming in advance. No, no, it's not designed to remember them all. You probably can't do that. But just being, ref you know, just as a reference to actually become familiar and acquainted with some of the names, particularly those names that maybe have a different spelling or maybe not quite sure how you might say, allows you to be alert for that person when you meet them. You see their name tag, if there happens to be a name tag. You don't need them though, but when they do introduce themselves or you ask for that person's name, you'll hear it and there'll be a little connection to the fact, oh yes, I remember seeing that on the list. As I said, not always possible, but if you can, review the list in advance. My second tip is, if you can, greet every person as they arrive or you arrive. Often I'm there very early, often involved in what I refer to as my unofficial start to engage people productively as they arrive. And I've got the opportunity as the group is really busy with that, to go up and see as one or more people coming in, say, hi, my name is Mark, what is yours? Now, that's not enough for me to remember it for the rest of the day, but not only does that provide a little bit of a welcome, I'm actually acknowledging that person that they've come, I've got a smile, everything about my appearance is saying, hey, it's really good to meet you, and I've got an opportunity to remember their name. So if you can, now you won't, let's say you've only got 30 people or there's 100 people, but you only manage to do it with say 10. They are 10 names you have now in store that will help you look good in front of the group, but also make a connection with a small portion of your group. My third strategy is to ask for people's names. And that means that perhaps you've only got 10 names in the whole group that you've captured some point, some way throughout the course of your program. And then someone makes a contribution, raises their hand. I will always, even if they've started talking, say, oh, just for a moment, could you remind me of your name? And that's such a critical way to say it. You could certainly say, hey, I'm sorry, don't know your name yet, or I've forgotten your name. Let's say everyone has already known that person's name. 
To remind me or remind us of your name is just a really sensitive way of asking that person to give us the name again. And there's a couple of things that are going on there. One, certainly it helps me. I'm adding to my repertoire of names that are you know, helping me connect with more people in my group, but it's also helping everyone else in the room. Everyone else who's going, oh, I don't know that person's name either, but now I do, you've just reminded me as well. So that's a really useful strategy. Always ask for someone's name and do it frequently to benefit you, but also benefit everyone else in your group as well. Okay, now you'd probably expect that somewhere on this list of strategies is to do name games. Yes, okay. Absolutely, name games, dedicated name games, those activities you might call energizers or icebreakers that focus on people's names, they're definitely useful. However, when I look back over all of my programs, particularly for the last 10, 15, 20 years, there is almost an absence of dedicated name games, where in my first five or 10 years, they were always there. And here's what I've noticed, and so have other people. We'll get to the end of a day, particularly in a training context, and people will say, hey Mark, I noticed that we didn't do any name games. And they, they see that as a, something that's absent from a program that they're doing where maybe it's the very first thing that they do is do a name tag. So of course then I don't actually have any name activity, whether it's a tag or not, and, and it sort of really jumps out at them. There's nothing wrong with dedicated name games, but if you are inviting your group in lots of interaction and sharing, then there's ample opportunities for the group to capture names as they go along. I will often say it like, okay, over the course of the next half hour, you're going to have ample opportunities to interact with lots of small and large groups. Here's your challenge if you want to play for bonus points. If you want to play for bonus points, capture as many names of the people you're interac interacting with as is possible. There's no test, no one's ever going to ask you, but if you want to challenge yourself, see how many names you'll capture over the course of the next 30 or so minutes. And that honestly is as useful as any dedicated name game that I know. They're great to play, but don't rely on them as a crutch. Otherwise, you may as well just put name tags on because it's about the same thing. It's like, if you think this is the only way you can learn names, bong bong, lots of ways of doing it. Here's a little secret. My fifth strategy is allow yourself to make mistakes. Yes, you are human. Even as a group facilitator, we have this persona of, we have this extraordinary ability to remember names, but we're just like everybody else. You may have some good strategies, which is the focus of this video. However, make mistakes. You know, call on those people. Uh, you may not know their name, but you might give it a go. It's like, oh, uh, Susan. And they go, no, no, it's Christine. It's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Now, in that interaction, it might be that where I got it wrong, or if I can't remember that person's name, if I don't want to make a mistake, I might simply say, oh, could you please remind me of your name? Allow yourself to make the mistake. It's clear to everybody in the room that you've already known that person, you've already referred to them half an hour earlier, but now it's slipped your mind. It's okay then to say, hey, can you please remind me? So make a mistake. That also shows a few things. One, it's okay to make mistakes. During the course of today, particularly if you're doing anything related to experiential education, mistakes are the platforms for success. And so, okay, I get it wrong twice, three times, hopefully by the fourth time I've nailed that name. And that, that's a clearly a really important metaphor for most of the education that you're probably working with in facilitating your groups as well. So allow yourself to make mistakes, which means of course, everyone else is also entitled to make a mistake. And I often mention this to groups is that if at any point during the course of our program, this conference, this seminar, this meeting, and you can't remember someone's name, what do you think you could do? And I'll ask the group, what do you think you could do? And I'll have all these elaborate strategies, but often the simplest one, finally will come out and say, you could just ask them. Absolutely, because that exchange says, you care enough to want to know the name, not that you're dumb and forgot it. So reframing that interaction is really, really important. Which brings us to number six. Listen to your group interacting. Yeah, like while they're busy, they're busy talking or they're busy doing something, wandering around as a good facilitator would be doing, and listen into the conversation. Now, that's probably important for the purpose of your program anyway, but listen for when names are used, particularly among those people you don't know the name of yet. And this is the part that I love. 
is that then later on, perhaps as we've gathered as a larger group, I'll call on someone by their name and they'll often look a little bit surprised because they go, hang on, how do they know my name? <laughs> I love that part. It says that it's important to me because it's important to them. Okay, here's one more strategy that I found really, really successful. It's probably only gonna work with young people, probably not appropriate for adults, but be sure that it's sensitive for the young people you're working with as well. But remember I had those 250 kids I needed to learn the names of within a week? Okay. So this was one of the strategies, one of my favorites for a kid that perhaps I'm still capturing the name of, it's later in the week. And I'd say, hey, hey, how's it going? You having a good day today? Or, you know, find some level of connection, we come closer. And then I say, hang on a second, is that your t-shirt or there's their jacket or whatever it is? And I'll look at the back and have a look at the name tag on it. And of course, pick up the name of the person who was wearing the t-shirt and go, oh yeah, Jimmy, of course it's your t-shirt. And then they'll go, wow, they know my name. The kids haven't worked out or locked into that little strategy. So that's been a sneaky little way. And you might find your own little sneaky way. So here's my challenge to you. What are you doing right now that is helping you remember names without name tags? Because here's what I found. When you've got a name tag on, we tend not to think very hard about remembering them. But the problem is that person takes their jacket off, the name tag goes with them, or the stickiness you know, uh, diminishes over time and it falls away anyway. Or maybe they just don't want to wear it. I know some of the fancier shirts or suits that I have, there's no way I'm pinning that name tag on that very expensive uh, garment. So there are lots of reasons why name tags don't work. Most of it's because we use it as a crutch. So tell me, and not only that, add to the collective wisdom of our community. What are some of the ways that you'd use to help you remember names, whether you're with a group for a short or a long time, I would love to hear. And my promise to you is I will always respond. I will probably beg, borrow and steal it and add it to my repertoire, but I might also add something that you haven't thought of as well. Now, if you're looking for name game ideas, there are dozens of them that you can find at playmeo.com. And the best part is that you don't have to sign up for anything. Everything, all of the step-by-step -step instructions through hundreds and hundreds of activities through our database are completely free and unlocked. We'll never know about you, no registration, no opt-in, no credit card. So just punch in name games, you'll find it as a particular attribute within the database and then add those to your repertoire of specific dedicated activities. But keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier in the video, any forms of interaction, particularly when they're non-threatening and highly interactive and fun, provide ample opportunities to pick up names as they go throughout your program. And if you're still looking for ideas, click on one of the videos that happen towards the end of this video that will continue to add to your repertoire of group games and activities that you can use. So be sure to have fun out there. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah.